Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and I'm gonna show you how to install this washing machine junction box. And where we are gonna install it is gonna be right here in this wall. We have everything plumbed out for our vent. I had to move the vent pipe over a little bit. You can see as it goes up here to the ceiling, we might have some clearance up there with a vent pipe that goes up through the ceiling for the dryer just in case we wanna do that if we don't have a self-drying unit. So I jogged the vent pipe over, which is fine because this is really just gonna be for the air. But right here, I needed this clearance because we're gonna be using this box right here. I'll put a link for it in the video. We're gonna mount this in the wall and I need that clearance there. And I also need the clearance so that this P-trap can sit in the wall properly. So we were working with minimal space here, so I jogged everything over. Obviously with the water flow, we wanna use a sani T. This allows air to come in, to come in behind for the P-trap, but we want that water to flow and I don't want any hard turns. So I used a long 45 with another 45 just to kind of jump it over. And then for the vent up there, I used a little bit shorter jump, but same thing. But I just needed to get this pipe moved over so we could have the clearance. We're gonna install this P-trap. We're gonna set this box in the wall. This will sit 32 to 34 inches off of our finished floor. And that's at the bottom of the drain right there where it's gonna connect underneath. You can mount these boxes either way. So you can drain it from either side. I'll be having my water coming in from the ceiling. So we're gonna have our water lines coming down. And so I'll have it mounted like this. We'll be able to mount the drain there. And you really want that long run. You want at least 24 inches of run you know, we're gonna be up over 30, but you want a long straight run down to that P-trap. So let's go ahead and install this P-trap. This is a solvent welded joint P-trap. I don't wanna do anything with any union joints that might come loose. So we're gonna be using this black ABS cement. We're gonna cement this in place. We'll get this mounted and then we'll start cutting our pieces and get it all together. So we cut this small piece here that will insert. Then we'll take the first part of the P-trap and put it on here. But before we actually put this in, it's always good to take uh, sandpaper, just kind of get off any burrs that might be on the inside of these pipes when you cut them. Those little burrs that you'll get sometimes from cutting these pipes, that is what will actually catch stuff inside the pipes as time goes on and you can have some problems down the road. The whole goal is to let that water flow smoothly through and anything that might be in the water, not give it anything to catch onto. So hit everything with some sandpaper real quick. Just make sure your edges are clean before we glue everything up. Now, when I'm cutting this pipe, I'm usually just using a miter saw or a chop saw. You'll see a lot of people use a sawzall or some type of handheld saw, but you never really get those straight cuts. So I prefer using something like a miter saw because I can pretty much guarantee that the cut is gonna be square. And it really does matter here where I'm trying to get really good fitment and I wanna make sure that each of those pipes sit all the way down. So having a clean square cut edge is very important. You also wanna make sure that you hold these joints while you're gluing them because when you put the cement on there and you let go, they'll start to push back. That cement actually dissolves a little bit of the plastic or the ABS and it will push back on itself. So if you read the instructions, it actually tells you to hold the pieces in place for about 30 seconds, then we can let go and it won't push back on itself. Now it's not necessary to recess these brackets, but I did just take my router and remove a little bit of the wood here on the studs. That way it does not push on the back of the drywall when I go to hang the drywall, but again, not necessarily required. I just kind of took the extra step here. Really nice thing about these, these units is they come with these tabs that help support it in the wall. So we can mount this here where we want it. Secure it with a screw. We can then put this tab in here like this. Then once we have our box mounted, we can go ahead and take our measurement to the P-trap and cut our pipe. And that's 24 inches on the dot. And in case you're wondering how we take that hole out, I just used one of my hole cutting bits. The secret was, is I actually put the drill in reverse because when you do it the regular way, it grabs so hard that it will twist this in your hand. But because this is usually thin, soft plastic, I put the blade in reverse and I ran it this way through and the blade scraping against it actually cut through it in just a couple seconds. So that way you don't 
cut it in your hand or twist this thing off and destroy the piece. Also really quick, if you wanna support me or the channel, I make clothing, I have uh, designs that I drew myself, I print them here by hand. I have these cool different designs like these eagle designs. Everything has a flag on the sleeve. I got a few other designs that I'll show you guys and I wear in some of my other videos. But if you wanna grab some gear, hit me up on my email. I should have a shop up soon, but I haven't had the time. I've been building this house. Uh, if you guys wanna support, grab some gear, let me know, shoot me an email, we'll work it out. I appreciate it. So now as we're test fitting everything, you can see that we have about a two inch offset, which is why we're gonna use some of these 20 degree joints. Similar to what we did right here is we're just gonna jump it over and we'll jump it over two inches. So we'll do one here at the bottom. And then if we have to, we'll do a small piece in between. And then we'll line it up here, depending on what we need for that spacing. But we have basically a two inch offset. And I also wanna make sure that wherever I set this P-trap that it's not too far in or too far out so that I'm also not trying to bend this because this is only about an inch back. And if I were to center it, it would be almost two inches on center right here. So I have this P-trap joint slightly turned so that we can be the proper depth into the wall. And then we're gonna jog it over so that it lines up perfectly with the box. You might also see that on some of the pipes, I have a white paint marker that I use on a lot of these black pipes. Whenever I'm doing plumbing, I use this to mark my cuts because it's a lot harder to see other types of markers on it. But I really use it as a reference line to make sure these angles are all facing the proper way. So what I'll do is I'll line up all the pieces visually to make sure that they're sitting in the right orientation and that the angles are gonna be all on the same plane at least. Um, and then if I have any special twists or turns and I got it all roughed in, or like when I dry fit things and I have everything sitting right where I want it, I'll go on there with that white paint marker or like a silver Sharpie, that works really good. And I'll make reference lines across those edges so that when I do go to glue everything back up, I can put the glue on there, seat everything properly, and then quickly find my reference marks and have everything lined up so that it sits the same way when it was dry fitted. So because I am gonna have to jog the pipe over a little bit, I have my 20 degree right there with a little bit of a straight. That way I have some straight flow, but I need to figure out what that distance is. I knew it wasn't gonna be completely butted up. So what I'm doing is I'm holding this in place so I have that proper offset. And then I can kind of hold that and align it to see exactly how far, and then I can measure between those two pieces and I can cut that splice. Looks like we're gonna be at three and a half inches. And there we go. We have our washing machine box installed. We have everything lined up. We have a minimum of a 24 inch drop with a little jog right there. We have our P-trap all cemented in. And then you can see what I did previously. I kind of moved my vent pipe over. We have all these joints and everything is really soft bend so that we can establish a good water flow. Vent pipes all secured. Everything has a good slope. So if water ever gets into the vent pipe from the roof, it, it can find its way back out through the sewer. So everything has a slope, but mainly we're focusing on installing these here. I have another one that I installed over here for the fridge. This is gonna be our fridge water line. You can see these boxes are really cool. Again, I'll put links for all these in the video description, but these are super nice. We have everything with a PEX A fitting. This is the PEX A expansion. Try to stay away from the crimping ones. That is PEX B. PEX A is a lot better product. You don't have any restrictions in water flow. So you can buy these kits that come in PEX A or PEX B ready. We have our water hammer arresters here. Again, these boxes can be installed either orientation. I have my water lines coming in from the ceiling, so I have everything sitting in this way. And you can also cement these in here too if you want to, but we're gonna have that drain line that goes deep in. If for whatever reason you wanna pull this apart, you may, you may not want to cement that, but you can glue this in as well once you have everything sitting the way that you want.
And as you can see here, we are building a whole entire house. It's a casita. It's kind of like a small house. We have plumbing, bathrooms, gas, full kitchen, everything, all the finishes in the bathroom, installing new windows, all that stuff. I'll even be doing the drywall, the insulation, and everything finish. So if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel because I'll be walking you through every step of all these different processes as I go through them, which will be within the next couple months. I'll be having these videos coming out weekly and I'll be showing you step by step everything that I'm doing so that you can do it yourself, whether it's new construction or renovations, the process is essentially the same. I'll be able to show you inside the walls what it looks like. So if you are going to open something up, you know what to expect. But if you are interested in any of that, make sure you subscribe and follow along. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. I'm really good at getting back to those. But once again, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you on the next build.